On this week's program, Jeff Johnston shows us the advantages and reason you should have a quality brake control system on your trailer. Also, Michelle Fontaine takes us to a unique campground in Arizona that is slightly different than what most RVers are used to. But, like Michelle, you'll see why many RVers love this tight campground and look forward to going back. Later, anyone that knows Yvonne Schmatter knows she loves traveling, food, and RVing, and has written many articles and books on the subject. She also loves cooking, and this week she prepares a delicious and healthy avocado chocolate pudding in her RV kitchen. Then, on pause on board, Dr. Fitz explains to us what to do if a skunk sprays your dog. These stories and more on this week's RVing Today TV. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by GoPower. Towing a travel trailer is great fun. There's all kinds of adventures out there awaiting you. But travel trailers sway the lateral movement that's unexpected is something that can plague people a little bit now and then. Even a trailer and tow vehicle combination where they're perfectly matched for weight, the trailer's not too big, the tow vehicle isn't too small, you have a weight distributing hitch that's properly adjusted, the trailer has the right front to back balance, all these characteristics, if they're all correct and in line, you can still have a little bit of trailer sway, lateral movement, at unexpected times. For example, when you catch a strong gust of side wind, for example, or when a commercial truck passes you and you get caught in the bow wave and it'll blow you around a little bit. Most of the time, of course, the driver can handle this and you correct for it and you're just fine. So sway is not really a significant problem as far as most towing is concerned. But there are times when something happens and you get a little more sway and sometimes it can be a pretty serious situation. Tucson Company has a new device called the Tucson Sway Control. This is a fairly new product. It's a solid state electronic device, mounts on the trailer. Once it's installed, there's no driver input. You don't have to do anything to it. It just is automatically there because it's powered by your, or it's controlled by your brake control and by the internal components of the device, which we'll talk about a little bit more. Well, we've installed one of the Tucson or Sway Controls on this little trailer and uh, it's got the little Mercedes tow vehicle. We're about to head over toward the Oregon coast. We've got a couple of drivers who've had a lot of experience with this vehicle in stock trim. Now that it has the Tucson, we'll head down the road. We'll cover everything from two lane roads up to four lanes and we'll see what happens and uh, we'll find out their experiences and get their opinions on it. The sooner we're rolling down the road, the sooner we can tell you how it works. The Tucson Sway Control mounts to the trailer chassis between 5 and 10 feet back from the hitch ball. The way the Sway Control functions requires the installer to divide the trailer brakes into separate right side and left side systems. Due to the wiring complexity and modifying the trailer brake wiring, the Tucson manufacturer recommends the unit be installed by a qualified service center. A solid state gyroscope is at the heart of the Sway Control. It senses lateral movement by the trailer. When the trailer starts to move side to side in a sway situation, the sway control selectively applies the brakes on one side or the other to pull the trailer back into line. There's no driver input required. The driver only senses it's working when the trailer quickly returns to a stable, straight-ahead towing position. A pre-wired LED indicator light provides function and troubleshooting codes. I just love to drive. I, I have to start out saying that. I've always loved to drive. Put me in a car on a road and I'm a happy girl. I am feeling a difference. Again, I'm not sure, quite sure how to quantify that. I am not an engineer. My husband is, but I'm not. And I feel, I feel some, kind, some kind of a difference, some kind of a tighter, it just feels tighter. <laughs> It, it's a long, it's a long ride to the coast, and you want to feel, you want to feel safe and comfortable as you're going up and down and around corners, as I am right now, and it, it feels pretty darn good. And when I have to make uh, steering changes quickly, or even just around a tighter curve, again, it feels as if we are one unit with the, my vehicle and the towing the trailer. 
pretty pleased at this point. Well, we've been uh, driving this, uh, this car and rig for about four years now, four summers worth. This Mercedes diesel does a fine job of towing it. It's got a 6,600 capacity, and since the trailer's fully loaded, probably only about 5,000 pounds, uh, tows it really nice. All right, so I, I'm an engineering manager with Daimler, and we make uh, heavy-duty trucks. And uh, we happen to actually install these type of uh, yaw sensors on our vehicles uh, to help us with uh, roll stability situations to help make sure that tractors and trailers don't tip over as easily going around corners. So I, I really understand the principle of how the yaw sensor is doing its job and the criticality to make sure it's positioned on the trailer in the right right location and uh, as I'm sitting here going down the, the highway about 60 miles an hour and uh, I'm just doing some side to side motions here just checking to see what kind of fish tailing I'm getting I'm noticing uh, not very much uh, when I make a, a slight drive toward the center lane and then over to the right right edge the trailer is doing a very good job of tracking right behind me uh, I make a little bit sharper motion looking for some fish tailing and I I see the trailer move but but really not as much as I, I would have been seen before we installed the, the unit so I feel uh, I feel it's probably doing its job pretty well so far I think I've been really seeing a good good result here uh, I've been making some of these uh, moves from one side of the lane to the other fairly quickly and uh, the trailer seems to be tracking pretty well. I kind of like this uh, Tucson system. I think it's uh, really going to help me make, make sure that when, I'm, when I have to make some of those maneuvers, the trailer's not going to come around on me and uh, fall back in line the way it's supposed to. This combination with this little Mercedes tow vehicle, which seems kind of small, but the fact is it's perfectly in control of that trailer. So it starts out as a good tow rig, but when you got the addition of the Tucson sway control device, that gives you that extra little edge. It's pretty incredible how you'll be driving, you're towing, you feel a little bit of push-pull back there, but otherwise the trailer stays right behind the truck like it's supposed to. I think it uh, seems like a terrific device for anyone that, that wants to add that extra edge of safety and comfort and pleasure in towing. Uh, it looks like something that's certainly worth taking a look at. Learn more by visiting our website at rvingtoday.tv. When Bedford launched AquaChem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet AquaMax, Bedford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. Hi, this is Michelle of Two Gals and a Dog. Recently, we visited Southern Arizona, specifically the Bisbee and Tombstone, Arizona area. We discovered Desert Oasis RV Campground a good SAM campground. Let's listen to owner Paul tell us about this unique laid-back campground. <laughs> so I came here for one week, actually four years ago last week, and I haven't left. It's been four years. And I fell in love with this place. I came here and I parked in that first site right there. Yeah. And the people who were in charge of the park <coughs> had broken down lawnmowers and everything else was broken. And I said, if I'm going to stay here, I want to clean this up. Can I borrow a lawnmower or something like that? And they said, why would you do that? I said, because I, I want it presentable if I'm going to stay here. Mm -hmm. So I started cleaning it up. And after a while, they uh, told the owner, 
why don't you hire this guy as a work camper and he's probably going to be good. So I stayed on and then when the owner passed away he left the park to myself and his sister-in-law and I bought the sister-in-law out. Be what have you done since you've owned it? Well, <laughs> oh, yeah. He came and he thought he conquered. <laughs> Good, let's hear it. Just uh, painting some of the buildings and scraping them down and cleaning up the debris, um, clearing out some of the mesquites so people can actually see the place now. It doesn't look as run down. There was, um, this park basically uh, opened in 2007 and they didn't have any equipment here other than manpower and a little riding lawnmower. So uh, I've gone out, I've got a tractor now, I've got necessary equipment to make it a little bit easier so I can make improvements. And, you know, the fences were there, but they were so dull and drab, they looked terrible. So we started painting everything. We painted the sheds, we painted the cabins, we, the shed up here, the office, the entrance, changed the sign, we put a new sign up. So uh, people didn't even know there was sights down at the front gate. Mm -hmm. I started trimming those trees and found out they were really in good shape. So now there's there are shade trees there at the front gate. So we're trying to improve it. And if you look at my um, ranger in the back, I actually have a little snip about this long of a mesquite that has needles on it that long. That's what was at the front gate. So if you went off the road at the front gate, you were guaranteed to have a flat tire. You're a good Sam member. Yes. When did that happen? Two and a half years ago. Uh, we decided that, uh, actually January of 2015, this used to be a members only. And I, I said, we've well, got to change the direction of the park. And the direction of the park then became it's going to be a family park. So how do you become a family park? You go to Good Sam. Good Sam does the, the review and the rating system all throughout the country. That's right. So they came in here and they checked us out and they gave us a very, very high rating. Uh, the one thing they nailed us on was we didn't have a lot of trees. I'm thinking, well, we're in a desert, you know. <laughs> but, you know, they give us a good rating overall. And every year we pass, and we're very proud of that. Now I understand that Woodall's, Passport America, AAA, everybody uses their rating system because everybody's cutting down on costs, so they don't want to send out another whole inspection to come up with the same conclusion. So Good Sam, we're very proud of it, and that's why we've got this flag here, and they give us new ones because that won't even last three months with the winds. But, yeah, that's been very, very helpful. So well, online people look for us on Good Sam. We found you online. Yep. We feel, we, we the boys especially, they actually have a camp. Shane, come here. Shane and Landry and their mother have a camp back in Massachusetts on the lake. So okay. they spend the summers in a camper on the lake. Okay. Yeah. So they're comparing you to what they have there. And they love it at King's mm -hmm. Campground. So how do you feel about, about mm. what you see in here? Much friendlier and more dog friendly. <laughs> Thank you. Definitely dog friendly, yeah. And, and just the, the people are very welcoming. And the reviews I've read about you were also that chose us, you know, we, we, got to, we called you for the reservation, uh, were uh, very favorable. There was certainly Thank nothing you. negative. But I, took, I made the decision that dogs are going to be allowed in the clubhouse, except when we were serving meals. Right. And we have one service dog uh, that comes in all the time. That's mm -hmm. Poodle. But I decided that was it because they're part of our families. <laughs> Most people that travel, especially full timers, have some kind of pets. Absolutely. And so I decided that was going to be it. My partner said, "Thank you very much," <laughs> because she had a sharp A, <laughs> and it was never allowed in here, even though it was her brother-in-law. So that was actually the that was I think what turned the tide, and made us uh, get better reviews, and more people then became again on the web. They understood that this is really a nice environment because three miles of trails, you can take dogs in that direction, up here, you the can go around. The nature trails are three miles? There's three miles of trails. The uh, perimeter trail that I made is two miles. And then you have the crisscrosses that go across and you can exit like over here, you can come up. Mm -hmm. You can exit over there. Mm -hmm. You can enter, you can do a third of the park today. You can do a third tomorrow. You keep we going. loved it. We've done it twice yeah. already. We, it was great. So we are talking to Paul Harrington, who owns the Desert Oasis RV Campground mm -hmm. in McNeil, This Arizona, is actually Munkel, yes. Just outside of Bisbee, Arizona. We highly recommend this campground. From off-the-road adventure camping to luxurious full-time RVing and everything in between, 
Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norco refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norco RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norco.com. Do you have a sweet tooth that just won't quit, but a waistline that needs to whittle? Today I'm going to show you how to make a rich, creamy, satisfying dessert that will wow you while still being healthy. Chocolate pudding. <laughs> what? Yeah, there's a trick to this, as you might expect. The base of our pudding is, wait for it, avocados. Ripe and ready, these nutritional powerhouses contain numerous vitamins and minerals, including potassium, folate, vitamins B, C and E. They're also known to lower bad cholesterol and more. We'll sweeten it with a little bit of honey and add a few more healthy ingredients. In just a jiffy, you'll be enjoying a no-cook decadent dessert that will leave a smile on your face and only you and I need to know it's not only good, it's good for you. It's super simple, so let's get started. What you're gonna need is a blender. Now you can use a Vitamix, you can use a food processor, a stick blender, a hand beater, or with a little bit of elbow grease, you can use a fork to smash the avocado and a whip to mix everything up. Okay, so to our blending container, I'm gonna add two avocados. You wanna make sure that your avocados are not overripe. So when you pick them out at the store, just give them a little squeeze, just a little gentle pressure, and they should give just a little bit. That's how you'll know they're ripe and ready to go. Just like that. I'm gonna add a half a cup of cocoa powder right to the mix like so. I've got a quarter cup of skim milk. Perfect, like that. We're gonna add about one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Mm, delicious. By the way, if you'd prefer to use something like a mint extract, a rum extract, or even bourbon, that works just fine too. But keep it about one teaspoon. And I'm gonna add a little bit of honey. We're gonna add six tablespoons, which is a scant or an almost third cup. And a lot of my viewers will know this trick. In order to get the honey to slip out of the measuring cup easily, we're gonna use just a little bit of nonstick spray right on the cup, and then we're gonna put the honey in it. Okay, and are you ready for this? You're gonna love it. Right in like that. As you can see, it pretty much slips out. Simple and easy, so you get every drop. The last thing we're gonna add is one teaspoon of espresso powder. This is just gonna give it a little depth of flavor. And if you don't have espresso powder, you can use just a little bit of instant coffee. That works just as well. Once blended, you're gonna put this into four individual serving size bowls or dishes. Because you're gonna get four servings out of this. Just like so. Nice and beautiful. We're gonna garnish this with some fresh mint. Now you can use toasted coconut, you can use an orange zest, whatever you like. I love the fresh mint. I'm also gonna eat these mint leaves as I eat my chocolate pudding. So right in like that. And then we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of floor to sell. This is just some flaky sea salt. I happen to pick this up in Paris. It gives it a nice crunch and goes oh so well with the sweet chocolate flavor. On top like this. Perfect. 
We're going to put this in the refrigerator. It's going to chill for about 30 minutes and then we'll be ready to eat it. All right, it has been 30 minutes. Our chocolate pudding has chilled and it's ready to eat. As you can see, by the way, it is just beautiful. Looks just like chocolate pudding. Believe it or not, it tastes just like it. So I'm going to have a bite. Let's see what we think. Get a little bit of that Florida cell in it. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, the salt gives it just a little bit of crunch. It's creamy, mmm, chocolatey, and delicious. Try this at home. It's simple to make in your RV kitchen. Let me know how it goes. I'm Yvonne. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. When Bedford launched AquaChem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Pause on Board is brought to you by Jones Natural Chews, American sourced and made in America. Welcome to Rolling On TV's Pause on Board. I'm Dr. Fitz. And this is Champ. Today we're addressing an issue that many RVers face. What to do if your dog encounters a skunk. Although we hope it'll never happen to us, dogs will generally get skunked at the most inconvenient times. Your dog may encounter a skunk in the evening time at home, as skunks tend to be most active at night. Campgrounds are also super common areas for skunk encounters, as they're usually near the skunk's home environment and provide an ample opportunity for an evening snack. The most common side effect of being sprayed by a skunk is of course, the smell. But did you know that the spray can actually be dangerous to your pet? If your dog was sprayed in the face, it can lead to severe eye irritation and drooling due to the poor taste. You may see your pet's eyes become red and swollen, and they may vomit and drool due to the spray in their mouth. If this happens, you can rinse your pet's eyes with a saline eye wash if available, or clean room temperature tap water. Rinse out their mouth with water as well. If this does not provide relief, your pet should be taken to a veterinarian for assessment. If enough of the spray was ingested, it can sometimes lead to anemia or decreased red blood cells, as the spray can be toxic this is uncommon, but if your pet is lethargic or weak with pale gums, get them to a veterinarian right away. <laughs> so what's the best way to rid your dog of the horrible skunky smell? Many of you have probably heard of using tomato juice, but this method is not very effective. You would need gallons of tomato juice, multiple baths. It would likely end up with a red dog in the end, probably like the champ here. So that's not working. An easier method is to use about a quart of hydrogen peroxide, a quarter cup of baking soda, and a few tablespoons of a gentle dish soap. Make up the mixture as needed. It should not be stored for later use. Use the mixture to bathe your pet, but take care to avoid their eyes and mouth. You can bathe them with a pet shampoo afterwards to improve the smell even further. Just make sure that you dry your pet well and put them in a warm environment after bathing. The final consideration you should have if your pet encounters a skunk is rabies. In the U.S., skunks carry rabies. If your dog decides to challenge a skunk, it's possible that they could have been bitten. If so, your dog should be taken to a vet to have the wound cleaned and treated and to receive a rabies booster vaccine. Always make sure that your pet is up to date on their rabies vaccine prior to travel to reduce their risk of illness. Tune in next time for more pet health information. I'm Dr. Fitz, and this is Champ. Thanks for watching Paws on Board. For more information on anything you saw in this week's episode, 
along with additional videos, interesting stories, and RV news, visit our website at rvingtoday.tv. This has been another fun production.